Hello, everyone. Welcome to the podcast, and thank you for joining us once again. We have the one and only Mr. Derek Johnson joining us for a monthly update on all things geopolitical, laws and orders, and what he sees with the road ahead. Again, if you are new to the podcast, please do like, subscribe, and share, and hit the customization button so you don't miss a minute of these discussions. As you know, Mr. Derek Johnson is a decorated Army veteran ranger, um, a country music and Western artist, and an author of two very good books that we'll be discussing towards the end. And he's been gracious enough to join us with his busy schedule. Derek Johnson, thanks once again, as always, for being on the podcast. How are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing pretty good. I want to make sure people know I, I wasn't a ranger, uh, just in case. Okay. Because uh, that's, that's definitely a, a, you know, a special tab that you get. So, uh, sure. But... Anyway, I was a soldier, but wasn't a ranger. Uh, but yeah, I'm I'm doing all right. I'm doing pretty good. I mean, it's just a uh, it's crazy weather, but uh, it's pretty cool. I had two. Uh, I don't know if they were F-35s. I couldn't see them. I just heard them just skiing on the top of my house earlier. So I was like, that makes you just want to run through a brick wall if you're any kind of uh patriot or soldier or former former soldier or whatever you are like that should make you just want to like uh just the roar the shaking of the house it was awesome so uh, but it, it it does happen kind of often through here so i mean i'm right in the path of keesler air force base and uh maxwell air force base and then eglin so they're they're always running through here how uh, bad so. Well, thank you for correcting me. I appreciate that. And again, thank you again for your service. We greatly appreciate it. Um, so Derek, first question to ask you is, can you kindly explain the importance of Executive Order 13848, uh, the Executive Order with the National Emergency for Foreign Election in Interference and the upcoming uh, extension deadline of September 12th, as well as what happened in Arlington recently when President Trump visited uh, the honor of our fallen soldiers and how these events bring in full circle back to the 2020 election. Well, executive order 13848, I mean, it's, uh, you know, it's kind of funny. I was watching a, a rerun of President Trump sitting with, um, I can't remember the reporter, but I think it was 60 Minutes or one of those shows. And she was just grilling him and grilling him. And he was like, you know, what is this? And uh, he's like, you don't ask Biden these questions. And uh, even though we all know Biden ain't real, but for the people who don't, he's like, you don't, you don't ask these questions to Biden. You ask him what kind of flavor ice cream he likes. Well, he gets up and walks off the set. And then uh, Kellyanne Conway or one of those, she came out and brought this massive book. And she's like, the president, she said, the president wants you to have this. And when the lady tried to pick it up, she almost dropped it. She said, yes. Kelly goes, it's a little heavy, isn't it? Well, it's a massive book. And the lady goes, well, it, uh, it wasn't what I wanted, but it was full of executive orders and a bunch of other things. Well, I thought, I tell people all the time, if executive orders don't mean anything, then why? Is Biden extending all of President Trump's? So extending, ladies and gentlemen, means continued. They're continuing them. That means enforcing them. Because an executive order is not, it doesn't require any kind of legislation, uh, any special legislation. Uh, an executive order has been around since George Washington. So they're, they are constitutional. But they don't require legislation. So the president has the power to write an executive order, which means automatic law, until that order is revised, revoked, rescinded, or resolved if it has some kind of resolution to it. Um, so a national emergency in an executive order means even more business. It means it's an executive order by the, the chief executive officer of the executive branch. And then a national emergency means, hey, our Congress way back when put in that a, a, a national emergency has a two-year clause with it, meaning it's got a two-year termination date unless it's continued or, you know, resolved. So Executive Order 13848, I think it's probably one of the most important laws and orders since who knows when. I always 
I don't like to compare stuff to the Declaration of Independence and things, but that executive order is pretty, pretty epic for this reason. When it was written and who it's written by. So I don't believe President Trump wrote it. I believe that that was a collective group of people who said, here's what this is and here's what we need to do and here's what it's going to do and here's what it's going to bring to the table at some point down the road. But it was signed September the 12th, 2018. If people will do their math, the only election up to that point of September 2018 was way back November 2016. So the only evidence of election interference that they would have had and inspiration to write an executive order with the National Emergency to collect data and evidence of election interference would have been 2016 and prior. So the first election under President Trump was November 2018. So if people will apply that math right there, that that was signed two months before any election under President Trump, then inside that order, it has a key line in there. Although no foreign power has altered the outcome or vote tabulation in any United States election. Wow, that's a massive line. That line packs a punch because it's like, I don't know if you remember, I know uh, we're, you know, I'm not trying to talk about our ages here, uh, but if I remember, John, I know you got to remember, back in the day in school, and I remember in elementary school, middle school, we had to do these, take a sentence, and you had to diagram it. And you had this, you had this little line, and then you put a little line up, and it went over, and it, it looked like a spaceship by the time you got finished drawing it. And you had to put the, the noun here, the pronouns here, the adverbs here, and the verbs here. And conjunction had a special little leg. It had, right? It had all those things. Well, if you're going to break that sentence down, although no foreign power, no, zero, zilch, let's put different words in there for no, none, nada, zilch, zero, no foreign power has altered, there's your other keyword, altered, the outcome. Well, the outcome means mine and your vote and everybody listening. That means that you and I didn't do that. We didn't, when that paper, when you filled in Donald Trump and whoever you're voting for, and you put it through there, it means you and I didn't do that. It means there's some entity, some organization, some group of people that altered that on the other side with an agenda. Then, or you got to take altered or altered vote tabulation. Altered vote tabulation. Vote tabulation, ladies and gentlemen, is three United States Code, Section 15, which is the counting of electoral college votes on January the 6th. All right. So that one order cancels out everything from that day forward to this day right now. So it cancels out January the 6th, meaning three U.S. Code, Section 15. On January the 6th, 2021. Everybody witnessed history already. We've never had this happen in history that we know of, all right? Or that, that would be at this big of a precedent. On January the 6th, Alabama and Alaska got through their vote counts. They both certified President Trump. In the Arizona count, there were two objections. And then all of a sudden, conveniently, the insurrection took place, all right? And when the smoke cleared on TV, because no one was there, but when the smoke cleared on TV, Pelosi and the crew came back and they rushed all the way through to the state of Wyoming, certified Biden, boom, made him president, certified. Well, ladies and gentlemen, they didn't do what is asked of three United States Code Section 15. It talks about objections. In the very bottom, it says no, no vote count. Basically, I'm paraphrasing, but no vote count count shall move forward unless those two objections are clear. That did not take place. So they, I call it the military occupation. I call it the government exile, the strategic plan. They made them break federal law in front of every American. They broke 18 United States Code 2381, 2384, 2385, which is seditious acts to overthrow the government and also treason. And then also 52 United States Code 20511. Go read those, ladies and gentlemen. 
and then three U.S. Code Section 15. They broke all those into public. That was full public disclosure. All right. So that executive order has been continued by Biden for three years in a row now. Keep in mind, once again, it's got a national emergency. So why would Biden extend an executive order, the very order that collects data and evidence to walk into a court of law and order and present with a focal reference point? Well, the judge will say, well, what's your, you know, they wouldn't say this, but let's say that some lawyer went in there and they didn't reference <laughs> the law. But if if that happened, the judge go, what's your, what's your precedent? What's your, what's your reference? What's your focal? Executive Order 13848, Executive Order, Nash Mercy. Now, what people have also forgotten about, and I was just texting Siggy Flicker the other day, so shout out to Siggy. Uh, and uh, President Trump just gave her a big shout out not long ago. He calls her Ziggy. So I don't know what it is about that generation, but my dad is four years older than President Trump, and my dad calls Siggy Ziggy as well. For some reason, they don't they can't say the S, uh, which is fine. Uh, Siggy, I texted her the other day because she posted on her page, Alina Haba, who's one of her best friends. And I've met Alina maybe two times, I think, um, at Trump International. Well, Alina was with President Trump in Pennsylvania, and she was at the rally, and she had this very strong speech about being a woman. Well, all the people who are still following the, the normal side see this beautiful woman get up there, and I'm a woman, I don't need this, and I don't need that, you know. Well. I said, Siggy, I said, that ain't why she's there, Siggy. Here's your reminder. Here's the PDF from the SupremeCourt.gov. And this brings back into place what you and I talked about on the last show. And I don't want to bring it. I'm not trying to, you know, what they say, you know, dig on a sword. Uh, but, you know, with the people out there with Supreme Court cases, if you want to talk about a Supreme Court case, let's talk about this one. All right, President Trump, I've been to Mar-a-Lago nine times. I've been to Trump International twice. I've been to Trump Doral once. I've never been to Trump Tower. I've never been to any of his resorts in California, Scotland, et cetera. Yes. I don't know if President Trump ever living in Texas, having a place in Texas, talking about Texas, anything about Texas, except for when I first met him, he goes, boy, I love that hat. I wish that hat looked that good on me. And I said, sir, I think anything will look good on you. And then, his trunk cards came out. He was in a duster and a cowboy hat. And I'm like, yep, I knew it looked good on him. But he's never lived in Texas. So what is President Trump doing filing with the Supreme Court, United States Supreme Court, through the state of Texas versus the states of Michigan, Georgia, Wisconsin, and the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania? That dock is still alive and open. That doc has not gone through the process of court yet. So see that executive order 13848 has collected from 2018, 2020, 2022, and we'll get 2024, probably got 2016 as well, uh, the evidence. And then this court doc with the Supreme Court and then the data from the military. Fox News told everybody on November the uh, 4th, 2022 that the cybersecurity teams of the National Guard were at voter precincts, all right, 14 different states. They said that in 2022. It's also documented with the National Guard dot mill in 2020. And then also four-star general Nakasone, Nakasone, I say it Nakasone, he may pronounce it differently. Uh, but on November the 4th, 2020, put out a tweet that our national, so it was our national security command, and also our cyber command were with our joint partners all around the world watching the election and, and hope we learn what we learned from 2018. So that also tells you that they were watching in 2018. Okay, so it's all been publicly disposed. It's just a matter of, you know, people, what are they looking at? What are they watching? Uh, but that key executive order is due. They bought it. Biden has extended on the 7th, the 8th, and the 9th, so I've been watching it. Daily, uh, seeing if it's been extended. Um, 
and hadn't seen anything yet. Oh, I froze for a minute. Um, and so um, it hadn't been extended yet. So it's either got to be continued or resolved. Because Biden has extended it three years in a row, it it wouldn't have like a revision for the for the fact that well, if there was a revision now, that would be tampering, because they'd be oh well, we need to revise something here. Well, what happened in the past three years? Why wasn't it revised in the past three years? Why wasn't it revi a revision on the first year? So it has to be continued or resolved. So I find it kind of funny that they put President Trump's sentencing on the 18th, which is after that. And then we have the 11th significance of September the 11th. We also have the significance of September the 17th, which is the United States Constitution's uh, birthday. So, you know, the, the timing of all that, and I'm not really worried about what people think about President Trump being arrested and all that stuff. That's just, let, let things happen the way it happens. If it does, it does, and it means it's part of it because there's a dash between 45-47. That dash means, continued and through. So it came out April, 2023. So he's either senile, crazy, lost all his cognitive skills and abilities, or I've been watching what I've been watching and the National Guard out of the states daily. Our foreign aircraft are on National Guard, county, regional, municipal airports, which is a World War II tactic, which is a government in exile and also military occupation. So everything aligns that way. But, you know, that's the one key order that's going to be like the, I don't gamble, but if you're at Vegas and you were someone who was good with die, <laughs> and you're like, I'm laying all my money down on a, a double six, boom, and you hit it, and then you want a million, right? It That's what that executive order is kind of like. Okay. Thank you. Appreciate the, uh, as always, the great I article. Long, I know it's a long, it's a long explanation, but these things do not have short explanations whatsoever. Well, not only that, but you're seeing it at a much more macro level than most people. So, you know, you're in your wheelhouse, you, you see all these details and you probably condensed it down from what you already know. So, you know, we, we just appreciate the getting the information to our, our respective audiences. So again, thank you for that. Um, you kind of touched on a subject I was going to ask you about, so I have to roll through it anyway. You said you weren't concerned about it, but you have to remember, Derek, that most people, again, not to be redundant, don't have the the purview of knowledge or wisdom that you're afforded, given your experience and your deep dives and all the rest of it. So there are people who are a little bit concerned about the possible arrest on the 18th. I also find it interesting on the 18th, Derek, because we know there's no coincidences in the kingdom of heaven, that um, it looks like. Uh, we're going to talk about this in a second on the financial side, so I'm going to reserve it. But there's some financial implications on the 18th as well. And also uh, there's, well, we'll get, again, more financial stuff we'll talk about. But but uh, you have the potential sentencing on the 18th. You have all these things, you know, ticking off. Um, do you think that's just more of the script, the 18th, for, you know, them protecting him away? Because we, we know he's the commander in chief, but how do you see all that playing out in the next two weeks if there is any fallout at all? Well, yeah, we talk about this all the time. All the, all the veterans that I go on with, that you know, mm -hmm. that that the military occupation doesn't mean that life doesn't still go on. Life doesn't exist. There's not threats. There's not a war. There's not a fight, right? The military occupation sets the playground and the parameter, right? It's kind of like any other war. There's a playground. There's a defined area of operations. And that's what the military occupation is and a government exile. They set this parameter of, okay, we're not going to get outside of this parameter. If something goes to this line and tries to cross it, we'll walk in and stop it, right? So President Trump, you know, it's no secret. He's, he's got, it's not the same guys. He's got doubles, right? Um, and that's proven because Kamala's got them, Biden's got them, Obama's got them. Um, so you got to acknowledge that as well. So but then you got to see, like I talk about, the, the key thing that most people, it, it depends on your foundation, like what we talk about in the Bible. The Bible, if you're a Christian, the Bible's got to be your foundation. It can't be something else because that's the root of Christ. Well, with military, you have military foundation, military laws and orders, and then it protects the Constitution. But the Constitution was written as a framework for Congress, not, not the military. All right, military, we have our own laws, orders, regulations, customs, traditions, et cetera, all right? So 
you know, what we try to do is what I've been trying to do is go back and, and say, well, what's your foundation, ladies and gentlemen? Because your foundation has to be this. It has to be simple. Keep it simple. Don't, don't get all this other stuff until you know your foundation, right? So a military occupation is lawful, first off. Um, and then why did it happen? So then you got to go and say, who's in command? See, I hear people all the time, oh, it's so far gone, it's so far out of our control. No, it's not. You're giving in to the devil if that's the case, and you're also you're giving in to the enemy if that's the case. You got to define who's in control. Well, the laws and the orders and regulations and everything that I show the military and also the blueprint that's laid out everything I talk about more than clearly shows everything's under control. It means it's an operation. Trust the plan. Well, you can't trust the plan if you don't know the plan. And if you, but, but if you know the plan, you trust the plan, and that means you got to trust the people in command of that plan. And that's who President Trump is. Now, what I believe President Trump did is like, I know people hate when I bring up Alabama football, but you know, it is what it is. We have the two greatest coaches in college football history. They both had the most national championships, but what they were both known for were delegating. They were managers of their program and they're called a head coach, but they were the head coach of their coaches and they let their coaches coach. So when a problem happened on the field, they went to that coach and said, what is going on with your unit? All right. Now, could that head coach coach that unit? Yes, but they're delegators. President Trump is an old school. So when you hear people out there, oh, he didn't serve in the military and he was a draft dodger and all that doesn't matter. He's a delegator. He knows how to take command, but he also knows, okay, if I'm not that, I know someone who is that, I will go to them and I will delegate to them. And if they don't do the job based on what others in that position are saying, then you're removed and one of these guys will step up and then see how they do, right? So it, it goes back to who's in command. So if President Trump were to be arrested on September the 18th, then to me, if that's the power play, then it is some move to go, okay, for all the people who are asleep out there, there's still a lot. I mean, there's a lot, like we know. So that mass majority out there, if you're awake or you consider yourself awake, you consider yourself an awake patriot, you consider yourself a reader of everything that's in laws and orders, and you know what the dash means, it's not for you. You shouldn't be responding or reacting. If you do respond or react, then you also are still showing you're over here with some of this side over here that don't know anything about military operations, military occupations, government in exile, continuity of operations, and why you would remove him out of the picture. Because if they do remove him out of the picture, it is for that reason. You can't make it look like a dictatorship because of what disclosure will be coming on the end down here. Because the disclosure is, okay, I just like I told a friend the other day, I said, look, I said, be real. If we went through all of this last eight years, might as well call it eight, eight years, and it was the same rigor morale, and they were all playing a game, and it's all a bunch of crockapoo and all this other stuff, then we're still in the same boat we were in before November 2016. It would be the same rigor morale, right? Or you believe that there's going to be a unity, and I know there's one of those words, uni unity, love, respect, faith. They've all been butchered. They've all been twisted. They've all been misconstrued. Johnny Cash had a song in the 70s, What is Truth? If we have a song in the 70s called What is Truth, look what we look like now. However, you and I both know actions speak louder than words, and it's what you do in this time period versus what you say that counts more. So the true unity, I've told everybody from the get-go, don't say that so-and-so is bad, don't say so-and-so is bad, don't say so-and-so is bad. You don't know who's good and bad. You only know what you know, and that's okay. But the people who are in command of this operation, occupation, laws and orders prove there's an occupation going on. If you don't read those laws and orders and seek to comprehend it, you won't understand that. But if you do, then that means someone's in command of that. All right. So I believe with the outline, for those to see on the other side, I believe that someone's going to come out 
It can't be RFK. RFK can only unify certain people. But I've told people there's going to be somebody like Obama or Kamala or someone that's younger who's thought of to the world as young, cool, and hip, and all the words, you know, out there, you know, whatever that, I don't even know the words. <laughs> I don't keep up with it either. But oh, whatever that is, there's going to be somebody who is super big and powerful to the left that's going to flip and unify this nation with President Trump, all right, because of what's shown. All right, that's the only way we get through this, because if we go through all this, even if Trump got arrested and all this other stuff and all the yada yada, if that let see president trump don't have to be exonerated to me he don't me he's already exonerated so that exoneration that he talks about doesn't apply to me it's not applicable because he's already exonerated i already know what's going on so when he says i will be exonerated i will be free november the 5th the great liberation starts november the 5th he said all these things when he says that that means there's something coming that will unify this side too what i could because i'm on the right the left what's going to make all these people spewing and hating and, and all the other something's got to get there and i believe that that's that occupation and i know that that's what it was set up for is that there's there's a unification process coming so things do have to look chaos somewhat and it's got to look all these ways because what they've been doing behind the scenes now, I always use the parent ideology. I'm not a parent. I'm not a dad. Uh, but there's a lot of parents who watch. If you're a good parent, you did stuff when your children were little that prevented them from getting hurt. And, and let's say you took a, a sharp toy away from them that was going to hurt them or could hurt them. And they cried. They cried and cried and cried at that moment. But they didn't realize what you did was preventing them from more pain and, you know, something that would hurt them. And then someday you hope they'll turn around and look back and go, thanks, mom. Thank you for what you, thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for your training. Thank you for that. Thanks, dad. Thank you for that. That is what President Trump and these generals have done from that angle is go, all right, most of the people have no clue what's going on. They don't know who the real enemy is and who that invisible enemy is that President Trump talked about all throughout 2020, the invisible enemy, the swamp, the Washington establishment. It's not the ones you see on TV. There's a few of them, but there's people behind the scenes that are that have been pulling the strings. So, yes, if President Trump is visually seen something like that, then it's one, it's already delayed. Everybody's watching the delayed process in the first place. All this stuff's been delayed. Everything you've seen has been a delay. So, you know, that's unfortunate. I personally hate that, but that's where our society is. If we dump everything on society that um, my macro knows and my micro knows, um, people, would they accept it? And then would they appreciate, once again, what the parent did for the child, right? Would they appreciate it? Would you know what to do with it? Would we be able to move forward in a future and prevent that from happening again? So they have to do things where it's in sequences, where it's whether it's financial on this, let that play out and then let this thing slip out, you know. So I personally, if people are frantic or scared, look, once again, I'm not, I don't treat President Trump like Jesus Christ. I don't treat him like God, right? But on earth, we have to have people who can take command, who can know what's going on, stay calm, stay cool, stay collective if something hits the fan, all right? And then also be able to lead that same group of people who might be frantic and scared out of that situation, all right? So with President Trump, I tell people that dash, came out April, 2023, all right? So he's either senile, crazy, lost all his cognitive skills, cognitive abilities, or he's just super egotistical and cocky, all right? Which I think cocky and confident are the same things, but whatever, let's go with the negative words right now. He's either all of that or 
that 45-47, already claiming the 47, already wearing 47 on the shirt, means that, hey, there is a plan in place. The plan supports our foundation. Our foundation has a constitution, a declaration. We, our founders, the three branches of government, the Bill of Rights, all these things. And then our military has laws, orders, regulations, customs, traditions. That's what runs our nation. So that dash either means all of that or he's crazy, senile, lost cognitive, and he's egotistical and all that. It, it's either or. There's not a, it's like Major Jim O'Connor's. There's a fence now. The devil owns the fence. Okay, so you can't sit on the fence. You're either one side or the other. It's like President Trump says, this is not Republican Democrat anymore. Elon Musk said it. We're at the crossroads of humanity, of civilization. We're, you're either on this side or you're on this side. So if they remove him, ladies and gentlemen, relax. When I say remove, if they arrest him, just relax, ladies and gentlemen. You either believe in that dash or you believe he's egotistical and crazy. It's one or the other. So, and then the other thing, September the 18th, I think today we're 63 days out from election. I can't remember, 63, I think. So subtract 15 from that. I mean, you wouldn't have long to wait, ladies and gentlemen, if, if he was arrested on September the 18th. Do your math. I mean, we're talking about peanuts compared to the bigger picture. Um, you know, so you got to listen to him. He's the one who says, I will be free November the 5th. The great liberation starts November the 5th. I hope the military revolts November the 5th. We don't vote at voting booths, ladies and gentlemen. He ain't talking about us going down there, all of us veterans, which is, he wasn't really talking about veterans. He was talking about active duty. Uh, we don't vote at voting booths and active duty. Um, so you got to listen to the man. Yeah. Well said, as always, uh, Derek. And, and I, I, don't, I don't. Before we move on to the last question for today, I don't think we can gloss over this because it's an extremely important point for me, and I think for our audience to hear what you said in regards to, you know, clones and doubles. Because you're right. I mean, you, every president since I don't even know when has had, I think, what six to seven doubles for the purposes of an assassination attempt, for the purposes of being in multiple locations at once, right? And so it's very important what you said, in my humble opinion, about, um, you know, Sortero and Hillary and all those people and Trump all having doubles. It's a continuity of things, you know, like the events that we've seen. So I just thought that that was an important highlight to touch on amongst the many things that you shared. Um, now, the last part of the, the question for today, as I kind of hinted at, I wanted to save it for the end, which is, this isn't your primary focus, but it doesn't mean that you don't have a core competency of it because you've touched on it before, and that's regarding the global reset. And the 18th, Derek, as you well know, it's a sort of a softball question, but it's a good one, um, is you have the potential arrest of President Trump we already talked about. You also have um, the first rate cut of many this year and in the continuity of the next couple of years to come as we go into this new economic reality of real money and real assets, et cetera. So you have a 50 basis point rate coming in September. We look at history, what happened 16 years ago, they did the same thing and it took down the market. But this now, this time it's global. They can't just, they can't stack fake debt anymore. We know this. But you also have, we believe the SEC, I would not be surprised. I don't, I'm not saying they're going to do it this day, but it wouldn't surprise me, Derek, if the SEC drops the appeal case on XRP and allows that to run free. And you heard President Trump speaking of which saying, when I'm back, which I kind of believe he's already here as commander in chief, but you know, you know where we're going with this. Um, when I'm back, I'm going to fire Gary Gensler. You know, these types of people do not wait to be fired. They exit out the back door precipitously, but to try to save face. So it would seem to me that a lot of things are happening in the next two weeks on this date of the 18th on the financial front. Can you talk to that a little bit, if anything, you're aware of it and what insights and musings you have as far as the global reset and what we can anticipate in the weeks ahead? Yeah, I mean, you know, it goes back to the the whole 16 year uh, plan that that the left had to to you know just keep our country into a chaos plus division equals power acquisition. I tell people all the time, look, our generals made comments about the last 65 years that 
hey, we get a chance to take it over, we will. We're not going to let happen what happened under JFK happen again. All right, so the, there's it's an alliance fight. See, that's why I tell people, all, all the people down here, liberals, Democrats, Republicans, conservatives, fighting over stuff that don't matter. I mean, they matter in one way, but it depends on what it is. But the, the war is between the alliances. That's why they've had Biden make comments about the European Union, NATO, et cetera. He's talking about alliances, right? President Trump says, well, I made the alliance do what they were supposed to do, right? Because we do. We have people. We have organizations, things like that. But, you know, I believe, and it's, it's the blueprint proves this. The blueprint and President Trump's comments and quotes about, you know, centralized banks versus decentralized. And also the uh, crypto, I will protect crypto, Bitcoin, et cetera, right? Well, banks wouldn't want to hear that. A normal bank don't want to hear that. They, that, that destroys them. Um, so, you know, and Thomas Jefferson was the one who warned about banks in the first place. So this goes way back. You know, people think that this stuff is just new and it's got something to do with technology and, uh, you know, in the last 30 years. No, this goes way back. All right, so the Federal Reserve being established in 1913, the Bretton Woods system in the 40s. You know, JFK went around the Federal Reserve January 1963, went straight to the Treasury. What happened 11 months later? All right, so when you do all your math on the corruption and what has taken place with these centralized banks and this centralized global centralization, then go back to President Trump. November the 9th, I took the picture at 4.56 a.m. Central Standard Time, after so the wee hours of the morning after the election, and there's a picture on Fox News of President Trump and, and Vladimir Putin side by side, and Putin's comment said, ready for a reset. Reset was in single quotations. All right. Then you go over, ladies and gentlemen, and look at Executive Order 13885. President Trump was the one who wrote the executive order for the Quantum Quantum Initiative. All right, quantum initiative covers a lot of things, not just finances, it covers a lot of different things. But the OCC.gov, they have a warning. They have a look. It, it, it's funny because early days when I went viral like two years ago, you know, you had your, your, your haters and all them talking about, oh, that's just a warning, though. And I'm like, yeah, but why are they warning people about it if it's not real? The warning is, a, is an example letter, ladies and gentlemen, on the OCC.gov of if a scammer or a fraud contacted you about a certain kind of maybe an investment or things like that. And it's like a perfect reading as an example. It's like like when you go look up resumes or how to write a letterhead or write a you know a cover letter. Well this is an example. And it says in there the global reset of currency. All right. So they're they're warning people that's disclosure, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't matter what form it is, that's disclosure. All right. So President Trump talking about Bitcoin and, and crypto, and he had the one in Nashville, Tennessee, of all places. Um, so, you know, all this comes together um, once again, and then our taxes and our inflation. I mean, it goes back to what, what did the deep state do? What did the swamp do, the Washington establishment, right? They're the ones that put the value on the dollar, and they made it as powerful as they wanted it to be or as low as they wanted it to be, and they controlled us that way. All right, so this is a reset of that. Um, and you know, I don't, I'm not the biggest crypto guy. I don't really, you know, I haven't studied it enough to know how will that, you know, like if, if you said, Hey, Derek, you know, I got a, you know, a, a tractor I want you to buy. And, you know, you give me one Bitcoin. I'm like, what is that worth? I mean, you know, I don't know that yet. I haven't studied that, but I know the general concept of it. And I've got a buddy who I've known for seven or eight years that was, all about crypto seven years ago before everybody was really talking about it. Um, he was knee deep in it. And I'm talking about uh, mega had a lot of money of it. Um, and he was talking about, I mean, he would bring it up in class with, uh, with all the professors and those professors were trying to dodge it too back then, you know, and they were conservative professors, but they were trying to dodge it. There's not regulated yet. He said, it is. And he would, he, he had the back and he said, yes, it is. All these people are backing it. Well, so that shows you, ladies and gentlemen, way back then, 2017, 2018, here was a buddy of mine who was already researching who was regulating that, all the different people who were part of it. Well, that still means that someone up here was in control of that. And I'm, I'm going to deviate just a little bit, even though I'm going to, but I, to prove how, to show you that there's someone in command 
that's bigger. Look at the law, all right? All of the law exams are going back to common law, all right? Common law. It's leaving this old maritime and all this other stuff that they've been teaching. Well, there's already an article out there of a law professor, and I can't remember where, but this made headline news, a law professor who's complaining about, well, we've been teaching the law this way all these years. Now you're telling me I got to teach it this way? Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you've ever been to college, you try telling a professor to teach something different. Oh, no, no. He's going to tell you to get out of this class. He or she's going to say, hey, young man, young lady, you can get out of my class. This is my class. Who is telling these law professors? Who's enforcing that? So here's a law professor who's saying, I got to teach it this way. So that's meaning that he's having to submit to this new whomever, this new command, this new control saying, this is what's going to happen if you don't. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's telling you a good thing. I mean, that's powerful when you think of it. So when you think of the finances, same thing. That's way bigger than, I don't know. They're about the same law and finances are the same level because they control our lives, right? Mm -hmm. If if we let them in a, in a bad way or whatever way we want to do it, however you want to split that hair. But still, finances, law. Well, if this law professor is saying, I've been teaching this this way all these years. Now I've got to teach it a different way. <laughs> that's telling you there's someone up here that's in control, a good person in control, because common law is black law dictionary. That's a great, great system we're going back to. So then that should show you that the currency right now, and President Trump saying what he's saying, and he said there will not be any centralized anything. That is huge. That is all over the world, ladies and gentlemen. That's That means decentralization. Well, that's perfect. Um, so, you know, that's a... Uh, that's my core confidence in it from the standpoint of bringing in the law saying that, look, somebody has to say, I mean, it, when you think of every professor across this country, there's a lot of them. Look at all the colleges we have. Yeah. So when a, a law professor is saying that, that means all these other law professors are getting the same message as well. Um, so that's that's huge. Very huge. I agree. I mean, it's really what he's in essence, you know, what's being said is, like you said, restore the republic. And you're seeing it in, in different iterations and ways. And just to back you up, Derek, as well, as you probably know, BRICS has a massive summit next month in Moscow with Putin. I was just having this discussion with another guest prior to you today. And I, about 156 to 165 nations there, that's over 80% of the world's population. They're basically getting ready to uh, give the proverbial middle finger to the dollar and uh, get away from that and nationalize, in a sense, all those respective countries' currencies and assets and gold and silver and whatever they're producing in the ground. Um, obviously, you, you're not, you know, have a crystal ball, but based on the laws and orders, based on historical replication and what you can see um, hanging at President Trump's, you know, sort of camp, uh, would you anticipate some things happening in, in the scope of things right now, this, in the remainder of this year? Well, I mean, you talking about BRICS? What what scope are we talking about? Financially, financially, primarily, just seeing some of these changes implemented this year. Oh yeah, I mean, you know, when you look at uh, when you look back at uh, the whole Indo-Pacific Agreement, and I don't know, they don't call it an agreement. It's just it's weird that they don't even have like an actual title, but it's just yeah. the Indo-Pacific. Mm -hmm. um, when Pompeo, the, the key line, I think, is in the first paragraph of that whole. Uh, yep. I call it a manual publication, whatever. Uh, but it says, you know, every na the vision is every nation to be independent of their own. Um, so when you see eighty five, like you said, it is eighty five percent of the world. I mean, there's two hundred and six, mm -hmm. I think, countries. Maybe I'd have to give that look. Mm -hmm. uh, Six or nine. But I mean, yeah, somewhere in there. And I mean, it, it, that is, that is eighty five percent, if not more, of mm -hmm. all the nations. Uh, who have dumped the U.S. dollar. And the same thing with Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe's tried things before, but it, it always plummeted right after. It. It's only going up and it's growing and it's growing. Well, so that. that shows you there's 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 someone in control over here. And we know mm -hmm. who it is because President Trump, he's made gold references all along the way. He's had a Chevy Silverado that was silver behind him. I don't know. I'm the only person that's probably had a Chevrolet at Mar-a-Lago in the first place <laughs> in the last three or four years. I don't know. Maybe not. But uh, 
you know, but still, hey, when has he driven a Chevrolet truck? All right. I don't, he really hadn't even driven a vehicle in a while, and that's fine. I'm not picking on him. That's, hey, great for you. Right. But it's, so it's all these references all along the way of gold and silver. Um, so, you know, I think it's already, you know, pretty much been implemented in a different manner. It's just a matter of when they want it to, to flip that, you know, Switch. in this timeline of what they're doing. Because it's a double, I, mean, I say double, it's a multifaceted operation. They're taking down the deep state and the subterranean warfare and all the, the, the corruption that the military has put up with. And then the federal government and the government kicking things back to the states, eliminating certain things from federal. So there's there's a multifaceted operation. So they're exposing Biden and the crime families and all this, and then also implementing good things that's going to, I mean, it's really genius, but it's also, I think that once again, I don't think that the men and women in the military that are doing this daily, the ones that are on the top, especially that knows what's going on. Uh, and then also that I don't think that these people are getting the respect and love they really deserve for what they've done in seven and a half years time. Mm -hmm. Wow. And President Trump, though, says all the time, I can do it in a day. I can get it done in a day. All that only takes a day. He said that in an interview 10 years ago about running for governor. He was like, I could, I could change New York in a day. I could change the, the, the nation in a day. He said, it doesn't take much because, once again, how does our nation function and operate? Um, and then really, if, if we could get really fast, I do want to hit the Arlington sure. thing if we could really fast because you asked about it earlier. and I didn't lose Please. that, but, you know, it, it just real fast, ladies and gentlemen, what's your foundation? Laws and orders. Military has laws, orders, regulations, customs. All right. President Trump went to Arlington by a request of these families, first off, all right? Photographs are allowed at Arlington, things of that nature, all right? So if President Trump is a former president, all right, then he can free roam anywhere he wants to anyway. He can free roam if he's president. So I could slice that pie any way you want to slice it. But he was asked to be there, first off. All right. The altercation was between an Arlington staff member. All right. That could be a staff member who is, has no clue what's going on in the world, no clue what's going on with laws and orders and regulations and customs. It could be just some regular schmuck, not knocking them, but it could be some regular schmuck that has no clue what's going on with current events. All right. Who calls this quote unquote altercation. But this also could be like I talk about in the military. There's a lot of people in the military who their ASVAB scores were very, very low, all right? Now, that don't mean they're not a good person. It don't mean that they can't take an order. It don't mean that they can't complete their task. However, should they be speaking on what the military is doing laws and orders-wise or, you know, what the general does and what the general's doing and what the general's laws and commands are? No, all right? So this staff member, that's what it was about. Well, then flip that around, though. This is also disclosure. Because it wasn't the regular press secretary there. It was press secretary conference, August 29th. She's telling the whole world, hey, I'm going to refer you. Told the, told the reporter, asking about the question. I'm going to refer you to the Department of the Army. I'm going to refer you to the Department of Arlington National Cemetery Rules and Regulations. I will. Then she corrected her. She said, I, will, I actually need to correct, make a correction. That's what she said. Um, I will refer you to the National Guard. All right. Bingo, ladies mm -hmm. and gentlemen, the only person who has federalized the National Guard to active duty is Donald John Trump. And there he was in Texas, February the 29th, with the governor of Texas and the commanding general of Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, the commanding general of Texas, the adjutant general, only reports to the president if the National Guard are federalized by Title 10. Well, Donald Trump's the only one who's done that. That was a command. That was a rank structure. They showed you a chain of command. All right. While Biden was in Brownsville. Here's other public disclosure, Brownsville, Texas, .gov. Biden, the 47th president. What? He's not the... And someone could go in there and edit that. It's a web page with coding. It's not stamped in forever. He can go edit that. It's still up to this day. Biden, the 47th president, on two C-32s that flew down there with no call sign. All of the DOD aircraft are flying with the presidential call signs because of President Trump. And all of your Air Force Twos and Air Force Ones are flying no call sign. So then go back to Arlington. What that does now, 
is bring back full circle what happened January 20th, 2017, when President Trump took his oath and the military walked down behind him. It brings up full circle Executive Order 13848. It brings up full circle January the 6th and January the 20th, 2021, when Joe Biden received 21 duds. He had a dud, all right? It was with three cannons. Three cannons at Arlington National Cemetery is not a 21-gun salute. Guess what says that? Arlington National Cemetery. So that press secretary told everybody to go look at Arlington rules and regulations of what they're trying to say President Trump broke in Title 32. Title 32, National Guard, ladies and gentlemen. That's the wrong title they want to be quoting. I promise you that. Title 32 is the National Guard codification booklet. That's what they quoted that President Trump broke the law of. Um, he can't break the law if he's the only one who's federalized the National Guard to act to duty. So when you tie all that in, Title 32, wrong title to be quoting, listen to the press secretary that day. I will refer you to the National Guard. I will refer you to the Department of the Army. I will refer you to all international cemetery rules and regulations. Well, let's go back to January the 20th. Rules and regulations, all international cemetery. Three volley salute is not to be confused with the 21-gun salute. The three volley salute seen or heard at Arlington is a funeral service. So see, that goes back to what I tell people. Wait before you speak. I told all them haters out there, you better wait before you speak. Wait before you speak. Because guess what happens? Somewhere down the road, this is going to come back full circle. All right, and it's come back full circle now because the devil owns the fence. So you either believe in Title 10, Title 50, Title 32, military laws, military orders, military regulations, military customs, military traditions, Arlington National Cemetery will be included in that, or you don't. So you can't say, oh, Trump violated the federal law, Title 32, which has nothing to do with anything whatsoever, all right? Or you believe him. So it, you can't have one without the other, right? Either believe in Arlington rules. So if you believe in Arlington rules and regulations and you believe that President Trump violated that, then guess what happened? on January the 20th, 2021. So see, it brings it full circle. So it gets people to talk about it. It get people focused on it. So that's what it's done. It's, it's allowed now. Okay, so you're acknowledging that. So that's what you do if you have Democrat or liberal friends, ladies and gentlemen, you go, oh, okay. So are you acknowledging that President Trump broke law? Yes, okay. So you're acknowledging what the press secretary said on August 29th, to say the Department of the Army, Department of, uh, all the international guard rules and regulations. Yes. Okay. Well, let's talk about that. <laughs> and then you show them January the 20th, 2021 go, Hey, well, I can show you where this has been an operation from the get go. And you're still in that. So see, that's where a lot of people and a lot of Patriots forget. We're still in a playground. That's what the military occupation is. The constitution was suspended and president Trump has said that, and that's what martial law is. And martial law is a military occupation. And President Trump, when he says, I will restore law and order, he's not talking about, oh, because the world looks like it's in shambles. No, the Constitution was suspended. And when people say that's unconstitutional, you go, well, have you read the Constitution? Because it's right over here in the Constitution, the writ of habeas corpus, the suspension clause, right? So when you, when you hear that, ladies and gentlemen, if you are in a position where these people are listening to you, then... That's how you do it. You say, so you're acknowledging that? Okay, well, let me show you where this is a bigger plan and a bigger operation. And no, he did not because he's not a former president. He is a sitting president. Absolutely. Thank you for that. Um, and just to, just a couple of touch points, Derek, to go, if you don't mind, just go back to the financial side to back you up is, uh, you know, Zimbabwe, the reason it wasn't working is because they were trying to do it off of a gold back standard, right? You see what President Trump is doing with a gold standard you know, here in America and globally, it's setting itself up. Judy Shelton, the new Fed chair, et cetera. But uh, Zimbabwe has trillions of gold reserves people have no idea about. And that's why they can now back their new zig and the bonds that are going to be tucked in under that. And then that I'm so glad you brought that up about um, the Indo-Asia Pacific, because I've talked to my audience about that in other, in other uh, podcasts. Um, as you'll note, they spent almost a trillion dollars of Federal Reserve funny money to get that through because a, it's the fastest way to bankrupt the old system, and B, back of Vietnam, which I guarantee you Trump has a lot of dinar and dong, so he's investing in the currency of his and the country's respective future. Both sides win, 
And that, so it just shows you, foretells how much power was in those moves financially and, and legally, to your point. Um, Derek, as always, appreciate your time. Can you just give us briefly where uh, people can find your work, your books, et cetera, and any last words you have today for our audience? Well, yeah, so there's a lot of fake profiles, ladies and gentlemen, out there. So I'll, I will never contact you about QFS and financial investments and things like that, because I, I, I can tell you, I'm not the guy to talk to about that anyway. So uh, if, if, if you want to talk to someone about financial investments, I'm not your guy. Um, so that's not me. Um, the, the easiest part is my link tree, uh, you know, so it's link tree link. And then you put the period between the R and the E. So L-I-N-K-T-R dot e e backslash 1776 nation that has all of my accounts on there but for sake of reference since we're here uh facebook.com they've got me censored on facebook so it's it's hard to find my page right now you'll find all the fake pages but if you go to the search bar and you actually literally type in type in wherever you're doing it on your phone or laptop you go to the search bar and type in www.facebook.com backslash the 1776 Nation, enter, it'll pull up my page. It, same thing with my backup Facebook, uh, www.facebook.com backslash rattletrap1776. It'll pull it up. Um, and then uh, True Socials at Derek Johnson. Uh, Twitter, Rumble, and Telegram are all the same. They're rattletrap1776, no spaces, no underscores, no periods, just rattletrap1776. Um, I have DerekJohnsonCountry.com. Uh, rattletrap1776.com and the documents.info. So I have my book on rattletrap1776.com. Uh, I still sign it if you come through me. Um, but if you are international, then the only option is Amazon. Um, and then also, if you don't like a hard copy, if you want stuff on your iPad, your phone, there's also an Amazon Kindle. Um, so that's the Midnight Rider Rides again. I'm also updating that. So uh, I had to. <laughs> When I put it out, I had to, uh, I stopped in December 2023. So I've been updating from December 2023 to present day. Uh, so there will be a part two. I'm currently uh, been working on that uh, all wee hours of the morning. So if you see me posting at 2 and 3 a.m., it is also me doing that. So, uh, and I think that's all my accounts. Uh, I, I may have a few more I'm forgetting, but. Uh, but my final thoughts, I mean, you know, we're, we're in the home stretch. That's what I've been naming a lot of my podcast is, is the home stretch you know if you're a race fan or a horse race or a car race or whatever you know we're we're past turn four now we're mm -hmm. we're we're on that stretch past turn four where the, it, all the racers can see the finish line um and then if you're up in the grandstand and you got three cars and they're nose to nose to nose you know like ah oh, you know but now that's not the case with kamala and uh, President Trump, I'm not making that reference. What I'm just saying is, ladies and gentlemen, I mean, you you know, now is not the time to really be probably understanding the military occupation, all that stuff, because it will take a lot of reading and research if you don't know that yet. Um, what you do have to know is that President Trump has shown from day one, and day one meaning escalator day one, uh, that there is a plan in place. Um, the generals... I know a couple of them. Uh, I know others who know more that have been a part of this. Um, it's who's in control, who's in command. And, you know, I just told a friend yesterday and I said, I know this may sound bad, but it, it drives the point home. I said, when our nation, if people can complain about gas, food, taxes, but our nation on 4th of July, every family, 99% of families, small towns, towns and cities can blow up fireworks. We're not in nowhere remotely close to what it should look like if Biden was really in control and if Kamala were in control and if Obama were really, oh, you hear Patriot, oh, oh, what if Obama's back here? If all three of them were in control, our nation wouldn't look the way it looks right now. Mm -hmm. Now, gas sucks, the food costs, so, yes, but for a reason. So when you learn what that reason is, is to get your attention, to pay attention to things that do matter. And hey, thank God we had these parents, if you will, parent Trump and parent generals and parent world leaders 
who know what's going on behind the scene. And they said, you know what? We know that most of the world don't know. So we're going to do this. But when they get done and they unveil that, me and you have to maintain and sustain what they did where we don't get back here again. All right, so you still need to know what's going on by laws and orders and how our nation functions and operates. And that way you'll know how to apply yourself. So my last word is knowledge is not power. It's the application of knowledge that's power. Perfectly said. Derek Johnson, thank you for joining us. Good, sir. We appreciate your service. We appreciate your time and your knowledge. And we look forward to having you again in the very near future. Thanks so much and take care.